everybody, it's Tyler here at PNW out in Pontiac Lake checking in team number 3218 Panthers. This team here, winners at uh, Clackamas just a couple of weeks ago, and they're looking absolutely phenomenal here as well too. Take a look at Panthers throughout. They got a great uh, vacuum suction going on. I saw it on the field, looks absolutely phenomenal. A cool arm. We're also gonna be talking about some other custom work like on their drive base, a little bit more about programming coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. David, yeah, we got to talk about the centerpiece on your robot here. Of course, that's that awesome suction uh, for your robot. Talk to me about how you came up with the uh, design for it, or even the concept to go suction in the first place. And obviously, it's been working out well for you. So let's talk more about that uh, and anything else that you want to cover on your robot, too. So in the middle of week one, we actually came up with the design for suction. And our thought process was, if our robot can hold on to the game pieces the same way both ways, it would be very simple for us to program and eventually possibly win an event. Um, that worked very well for us later on as we did end up winning one of our events. And over the course of four weeks or so, we went from one suction cup over to three suction cups, as well as eventually we went to three independent vacuum motors and eventually we changed to a solenoid process system. So with how our robot works, if our drivers would manage to open it, please. So as we open our arm, we see that our cones actually would get held here as we're collecting from one of our feeder stations. As we hold our cone, when we end up bringing it up, we actually pin the cone in place between our arms and hold it firmly with our vacuum motors running. You said you started out with uh, one vacuum motor a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you know, you won an event two weeks ago, so what made you want to change to put on more? So our reasoning behind it was if we only had one vacuum motor, what ended up happening was if one suction cup didn't quite seal, we wouldn't end up with the game piece sticking. So we went to three independent lines as well as three independent vacuum motors. So we started off with one vacuum motor driving all three, and eventually down here we changed to three Neo 550s, all of which are powering independent vacuum lines, which come up and power our arm, which is holding the game piece on. Um, this has worked with both game pieces for every match that we've had it set for. And yeah, talk to me more about your collector on the front of your robot. What are you utilizing that for? Because I saw your arm, you know, you mentioned you're collecting from the, the substation stuff. Uh, how often are you using your collector and how's it working out for you? So primarily we're using our collector at the very beginning of our match. So our collector is actually primarily used for cubes. Um, we are primarily using it to take game pieces from the starting configuration and move them to our side. As soon as we move them to our side, usually we can either straighten them out ourselves later or we can end up having one of our alliance mates move it outwards. Um, we end up usually tossing our game pieces over and we toss them over in order to pass them off to our other teammates. Can we see uh, Cube come in and kind of demonstrate that a little bit? So. On startup, our collector stays inwards, and when we go to collect, we actually are ready for our cube. Now, it holds the cube firmly in place, and it folds itself upwards once we're done. Eventually, once we're ready to let go of the cube, when we're ready to toss it, we end up throwing our cube, frankly, over the charging station. Yeah, I love that strategy that your team has uh, employed on that. I, I think just having that combination has worked out really well for your team. So definitely congratulate you on, on that and coming up with a cool concept for that. Let's keep moving on. Uh, Broderick, talk to me more about uh, the arm that's on your uh, robot as well, how you come up with that. And then you got some cool 3D prints that we're going to cover as well. So with the arm on our robot and also relating to the collector, we took a different design process this year compared to our previous years. So when the competition was released, rather than watching the release video and then going through the rule book, instead we started, we waited and recorded the live stream and then we 
read through the rule book and came up with ideas and strategies in order to not get any preconceptions in our head. And then we ended up coming up with these ideas. And then of course later watched the live stream. Ended up coming with these very creative ideas. And so those uh, that's been working very well with us. With the arm assembly, we have we have a Frankenbot that we tested different things with, so we ended up coming up with these lengths. So with these lengths, we can hold the hold the cone <clears throat> well and firmly within the arm. And we've gone through many slightly different iterations with different lengths. And this is the right one that we found that works the best where it pins with these plates and it holds these. And then it can reach out very well to the upper grid for the cones. So as the arm reaches out to the high position, we press against the bumpers and then we move side to side to get it in the right position. Just seems like it's working so well for your team and, and like I said, definitely applaud you with just a cool concept design. Uh, I noticed some cool 3D prints on your robot as well too. Talk to me more about that. So we have multiple different 3D prints on our robot and more that we're planning on implementing. So we have one here for our radio. This is a design that I designed on my own and I 3D printed on my own personal 3D printer. So I went through a few different slight iterations and then I made sure the lights were visible and that this was open. We also have our swerve drive module covers which protects our encoder for our MK4i swerve drive and also just looks nice. Yeah, definitely a great concept and design uh, on that as well, too. Let's start to wrap up. Uh, Zach, talk to me about, uh, you know, from programming-wise, we saw a couple of set points, but I'd love to just hear more about uh, maybe some of the concept behind uh, how you came up with that and uh, any advice for teams that you've seen uh, throughout the season as well, too. Well, for the ARM set points, essentially, the collector and ARM are in a each at a length that they can collide if they're moved like at the same position almost. So it's very important for the set points between them so that they can avoid collision. For example, if we move the arm to the middle position, real quick, the collector also moves down. And then when we move the arm back, the collector waits for the arm to make it first so that they avoid colliding with each other. I think for other teams, I would recommend writing a system that is expandable and can be used in different ways, whereas writing a new position, for example, is not writing new code, but more just new values. Well, 3218 Panthers, uh, your team has been looking phenomenal here today. Congrats on your uh, win a couple weeks ago. And as we film this, uh, number two seat at the end of the day today. Congratulations on that. So looking forward to see how you do at this event. Uh, of course, hopefully at DCMP and even beyond as well. Thanks a lot for taking the time. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charge Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash first updates now. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.